Hi, this is Sean Perrin, and you're listening to episode 61 of the Clarinet Podcast, the show where I discuss all that's new and neat with clarinet with the neatest people in the industry. In today's episode of the podcast, I speak with Matthias Muller, who is the co-inventor of a device called the Sabre. The Sabre connects to your instrument and transfers pressure and motion information to your computer, which then augments your performance in a live setting. It's actually really amazing what it can do, and to see some of what it's capable of and how it attaches to your instrument, head to www.clarinet.com and check out the show notes for today's episode. It's worth noting that Matthias and I met first last summer at the Clarinet Fest conference in Lawrence, Kansas, and I was able to watch a really amazing presentation where he talked a little bit about the device's history, did some performance, and I knew that there was nothing newer or neater that I would find at the festival that summer, and uh, he absolutely had to come on my show. And I'm so thrilled that he was able to join me on episode 33 of the podcast for the first conversation, and this is providing an update so far as where the product has gone, where it's going, when it's going to become for sale, um, some of the compositions that are upcoming for the product, and and lots more. Um, if you haven't checked out episode 33, you don't really have to, but you might want to before you listen to this episode, just to give you a little bit more context and learn a little bit more about some of the details, which are sort of assumed in this episode. I also want to say that this is one of the reasons I really think it's important for me to attend these conferences. There's no other place better than Clarinet Fest for me to check out what's new and happening, meet great people, network, and bring you more fantastic content for the show. This month, all sales from the Clarinet store, all backers from Patreon, all affiliate link sales, everything like that is going towards helping me get to the Clarinet Fest conference in 2017 in Orlando, Florida. And this week, I'd really like to thank Lisa. C, Sarah F, and Kristen C for being our latest backers on Patreon. Patreon is a service that allows people to support a project like a podcast through a small monthly donation, and in exchange, you get access to bonus content. To check out more about what's available to sponsors of the Clarinet podcast, please see www.clarinet.com slash Patreon. Today's episode was also brought to you in part by our sponsor, Dario Woodwinds. Sanding, shaping, balancing. For centuries, mastering your instrument meant mastering these crafts too. But now, D'Addario is refining craftsmanship for the 21st century by refining their reeds and mouthpieces with the world's most innovative techniques. So you can spend less time sanding, shaping, and balancing, and more time perfecting your own craft. To learn more about the new era of craftsmanship from D'Addario Woodwinds, visit D'Addario.com woodwinds. So welcome back to the Clarinet Podcast, Matthias. It's been, uh, I think I met you last summer at the Clarinet Fest out in Lawrence, Kansas. And now your product, which has started um, sort of in your university lab in Zurich there, it's almost ready to be released. So why don't you give the Clarinet community a bit of an update as far as where it's gone since we last spoke in September and where it's going and when we can expect to buy one. With pleasure, I can do that. And I think I have good news. Um, we really, the whole development process in my institute went as we planned it. Um, the whole um, design is done. The whole LX hardware is done. The software is coming to a really nice, uh, nice point. And we had just a little delay um, because our production uh, company said they have no capacity for us because we are, of course, a little fish <laughs> in the big <laughs> water. But of course, we are a very nice fish, <laughs> an interesting fish. And so we we will do it with uh, uh, another company, which is at the end probably a better um, collaboration for us. So what we can do, we will present the sensor at Clarinet Fest in Orlando. We will have a booth. You can come there and try it out. You can look at it. You can talk with us and you see what is possible. You can try it out there and you can hear the concert. I will play on Friday uh, premiere uh, with the percussion ensemble, which I really look forward. The piece is almost 
ready. And yeah, so that's just the most important points. I think then I can say we, you can already buy it at the Climate Fest and we will deliver it in September. And yeah, so these are the news, the prize we will communicate then in Orlando. So people can actually try out the product at the booth though. Exactly, exactly. They can try out it at the booth. We have to see, you know, the situation at Kleinet Fests. It's <laughs> yes. quite loud. In this. Very busy, very busy. <laughs> busy. I think it, it is, will be difficult to try it out really carefully. So uh, we will find if somebody has really interest in, in buying it, we will find a quiet place where we can try it out and show and, and do so because it's, it's much better because you need then the, the headphones or loud, better we will work with loudspeakers. And it's, it's not nice when, you, when it's so noisy, you cannot get the real impression what we will have but anyway we will find some 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 quiet places secret places to try. <laughs> can't announce those <laughs> so yeah, for yeah. anyone who didn't check out the previous interview or, or or has yet to um would you give sort of a in a nutshell version like what is the sabre and how can it help you with 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 improvisation and contemporary composition and, and just taking your clarinet to the next level yeah so i think we achieved our main goal I had um, in 2000. It was to bring together the, our acoustic playing with electronics in a better mm. way. That the world of our sounds we produce with our instruments and the fascinating world of electronic sounds are not separated, that you can bring them together. That's like a fusion of these two um, like parts or two different ways of producing sounds. And so you will be able to take just your clarinet and you can add our sensor system to your instrument. It doesn't really hurt your instrument. It's very easy. You need, I don't know, five minutes just to attach it to your instrument and you can play in a totally different way with your instrument. But you have the choice, you can just play normally and then you can change, you can play with electronic sounds and so on. And there will be also a software you get with our product. And with this software, you can then really design your own way how you want to use electronics. And of course, we will now start also with compositions. I mean, it's great if there will be composers in the whole world who will start to work with that. It's kind of a standard to use electronics. And it is really the idea, and we achieved that, is that you as a performer, or even as a composer, you have not to be a specialist in electronics. Mm -hmm. You have to be a musician. That's the most important thing. I think tech, technique has to be done for us as artists, as players, as composers, as improvisers to use the, uh, the instruments. Like we are not building our instruments neither. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and and that's, that's just a tool uh, how you can use electronics with clarinet, bass clarinet, E-flat clarinet, whatever you want, a, a basset clarinet, <laughs> <laughs> or even you can also, of course, with all saxophones as well. So the device itself sort of consists of a pressure sensor which runs through a little tube to determine the pressure and attaches to the barrel, right? Um, and then there's a little thumb switch. I believe the thumb switch... Is this a new element to be included with the, the retail version of this? It looks like it's changed since we last spoke. Mm, yes, no, no. I think it was it was always. It's the what we have, the sensor, what you put around the barrel, it mm -hmm. was not it's not anymore around the mouthpiece. We yeah, changed yeah. so that you can attach it to the barrel because it's much better because on the on the mouthpiece, of course, you have the, everything with the reed and and uh, how you say how to fix the reed. Every everything has something different, and it could be then difficult with certain things. But so just you can put it around the barrel, so you are feel free. And then you have the tube coming under a patch on the mouthpiece, and you have a movement sensor and uh, air pressure sensor, and then you have this. Um, 
remote at the at the at the, the clarinet where you with a thumb you can and you can put it where you want it's also versatile you can make it that it's comfortable for your position of your hand mm-hmm. and so no i mean actually it was it was meant what you can do is so you can only start with a remote if you like and what is new now that's very interesting we changed to bluetooth because oh. bluetooth uh, improved a lot. So you have a direct connection to all Bluetooth devices with this thing. So you can, of course, you can go in the computer and then work with our software, but you can use anything else what you want. And so it makes it much more open and we will soon work also for versions with iPads, with phones that you don't need even a computer. But wow. this is all a lot of programming work and of course we have now to start it depends also a little bit how much investment we get in our company that we can hire specialists for developing all this software and as more people join in the community and start to work with that as easier it is to get money to improve and develop all these things Absolutely. Yeah. The the device itself, when you're using it, how long is the battery life and are the batteries rechargeable or does it just take standard batteries to switch out easily? Okay. We have for the sensor, we have standard battery AAA, AAA Mm -hmm. batteries. And of course there depends just the quality you use because we saw the system. It's much better that everybody's independent of that. So it's also a battery system is for us better than something to recharge because if you go on on stage, you just can say, okay, before you go on stage, you just put your new batteries and it works for a whole evening, no problem. Mm -hmm. Um, Then if you have a system with recharging, then you have not recharged it and you have no possibility to recharge it if you are in a festival stress moment before going on stage. So you are on the on the good side. Just I mean, of course you can can use rechargeable batteries, and but you are independent of that. So yeah, I like that actually because you know just better. like you said, you could keep a set of backup batteries in your case or something for the device. Exactly. The device itself. So it, how easy is it to sync with the computer? Is it just like attaching any other Bluetooth device, or is there a button on the Sabre? Or yeah, it is just. You switch it off, and then you you look at the computer, and it gives a signal. It's it's just it will be it will work very good and no problem. I have not tested it yet. I have still to wait, but I I have now worked with my institute and my engineers for years, and I know they they do a great job. I have no doubt, and of course it is. I mean, this is was the big challenge, and it's in a way that we can work with music on the same level as we work with all other things, you know. It, we just bring it on the newest industrial standard. And that's also now our next big challenge, is to really to run this company yeah. on a really good level, that we can always update it to the newest technical level. Um, and so this is, um, I think, yeah, this is just... A good thing that we we have our our staff of people, and of course we will try to to hire people specialists who work for our system, and we want to go on already to develop new things, also to to do new software, and also to do it for other instruments. Because if there is an exchange with other instruments, it will it will be artistically more interesting. That, but as I said, also we with just uh, bringing new software to combine it with other programs, with uh, videos, with everything, with visuals. What is just that we you can use it really in a different and a lot of ways. Which instruments is the device currently able to be used with? Just clarinet and saxophone, or, or is there a way to get it to work with a flute? Probably not, eh? The flute is the problem that you cannot get with a tube in mm, your mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we have already the idea of the solution to, to do it, which I cannot <laughs> tell now. Fair enough, fair and enough. With all all brass instruments as well. This all depends now on the on the on the 
um, on the investors we can get. And there I have also really already good um, not news yet to tell, but I have I got really very interesting contacts in New York now mm. with mu- producers, music producers, and they really love the system. They think, wow, that's a unique new thing, and they will help us to first. We will do productions as well with international, really big um, artists, big names, and on the other hand. It will be also possible, of course, to to develop the whole system on a broader level, um, also in the States, not only in Europe. So, of course, one element of having this idea gain popularity um, is having musicians actually using it and improvising with it and playing with it and experimenting. But, of course, I think that one other element is to get composers on board is there going to be sort of a way or like a manual or some method which composers can can write for this sort of instrument augmentation? Yes and no. I mean, it's um, I don't know if a manual for composers, it's more, I think, the best thing also in classical composition, if a composer is really composing a piece specific for, for a player or for an instrument, the best is the interaction between the player and the composer. So mm-hmm. the best is a collaboration between a composer and a player. Uh, and then uh, that's what I did now. I will do a premiere concert. I can send you afterwards also the, the information about it. The 30th of June, we will have a, a, a concert with some new premieres. There it's still with the old Sabre prototype, but it's still, there are pieces that you can play also with with this, our Sabre system. There is one very important composer for electronic music, Thomas Kessler. He's one of the pioneers in Europe for electronic music. And I will premiere a piece he did. And this piece is also to play with just a normal bass clarinet. It's a bass clarinet piece or with Sabre um, um, system. And so we are going on, we are finding more and more solutions, good solutions for it. And then of course, I composers can learn from other compositions that has been done already. And I will go on, but I have already colleagues like Stefan Vermeersch, Karel Dornal, uh, Michael Lovenstern, who are so interested in the system and they will start with it. And and then they will also order compositions. I will be also at the European Climate Festival in Porto in December. There I will present a solo recital with all new pieces. And there, of course, I will use only the new sensor and mainly also with clarinet to show that you can use it really with clarinet. Um, so, yeah, there is it's going on a lot. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to build up a real community of people, we will have in February 2018 a specific Sabre symposium here in Zurich, where there will be a lot of um, players invited to present what they were, what they did with this uh, Sabre sensor. And yeah, so there is really going a lot, and it's really the moment I think that the, the, it really Orlando I think will like <laughs> like be the birth. And of course, like it is a baby, a newborn is not running around yet, but uh, it's really the birth of the new generation now. Um, after this long time of uh, developing, not knowing where it will go, we have now the product and we can present the product and then it can start to make, to make his own paths. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. That. Well, I feel like those of us who were there last year at Clarinet Fest, Clarinet Fest got a really sort of special preview of all this because now it's sort of the big, this year is the even bigger announcement for, for the Sabre at the festival, right? Yeah, indeed. Yeah, it will be. And and of course, I'm looking forward to next uh, <laughs> Clarinet Fest that a lot <laughs> of other performers plays it, can also play, can use it. And, and we can see where to go because... Yeah, I mean, that's that's really, I mean, I I just will bring out also my new CD in, in Orlando with oh, nice. Mozart Concerto, Mozart Concerto, two new compositions I did. One is a double concerto for two clarinets, 
basically two basset clarinets and um but it can be played also with two a clarinets i recorded it and premiered it in april with the not very unknown clarinet player michael collins and we had a really great um collaboration and i think i can already announce that this piece will be played also in the Clar- european clarinet festival in Guilleur in 2018. Oh, wow. So, that, but that's totally normal clarinet playing. And yeah, I go on with that as mm-hmm. well. But I I think we can, can go new ways. But I think really this, the really new thing now in music is electronics. And I am really happy to do, really to promote also this way and but still the i think you know it's i mean we know we we love all electronic stuff but we still love to talk to meet and we still love natural sound but now to make really a good combination between natural and electronic sounds that's what i want to go on and and i'm really happy to do that with others together that's one of the things I love about this, the whole Sabre idea is that you can still play your instrument as it is and then add the, you can augment it, just as the name sort of says, sensor augmented bass uh, clarinet, correct? That's the, that's the yeah, way that's it, it breaks down. Yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, of course, a very skilled clarinetist and, and also improviser, um, but also composer. In fact, you're writing the piece that is premiering at Clarinet Fest or, or one of the pieces anyways. What's it like composing for the the Sabre and, and how are you going about like marking in the score some of the intentions you want from the device? Yes, it's uh, of, of course for me it's I'm so familiar with the system because I, I play with it since 2014 that for me it's just it's just normal composing actually. I have not it's just it it allows me to do new things, you know, it's, um, and of course to now what I do, what I work is that tomorrow, actually I will start to record some percussion sounds Hmm. and then I, I can work, I can play with this called percussion sounds as well. Oh, like a sample. And, and yes, yes, samples, but not just samples on off. I can change the samples simultaneously as I play, I can transform then the samples with my air pressure, with my playing. And it is not just just on off, you know, samples sometimes gets a little bit, yeah, you know, okay, now the sample is coming. No, I can work, I can uh, modulate mm-hmm. the quality and the sample life. That's such a nice thing, you know. Well, and, and your bass clarinet has the because the, the 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 retail version has the the sensor and the button for the thumb, but of course yours also has the key sensor. So would you actually be able to sort of almost like play marimba with your clarinet, sort of by for example? You know, yes, I, that's that's absolutely a possibility. But actually, at the moment, of course, I I don't emphasize on the use of the key sensors because I want to really see already our sensor, what we the retail version. It gives such a lot of possibilities. And what I saw now in the process in the last four years, uh, working with composers, it's like, like too much. That's too much. It's, yeah. You have like start small and it's as a composer, it's better to use certain things, but may have a real clear idea. So it's really nice. I look really forward to my, this Thomas Kessler. He's, um, I mean, of course, not everybody knows him, but in the music electronic world, he is a, a big name and he has always very nice ideas. And now he does the piece I can already t- t- tell to you. It's a berceuse. It's like a lullaby. And I just play the bass clarinet. I can sit and I just move with my clarinet left, right, left, right, and use this in a very sensitive way to change the sounds. And yes. so this is just with the, to just to use this movement sensor. And it's, and it offers already so many possibilities that you don't have to just use, let's say, it's not good to start with an orchestra piece with, let's say, all instrument, all colors, all possibilities. It's always difficult to handle that. So I really love to, 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 to be like that. And of course, it's our aim that 
we can build a, a find a solution to make a system for all keys as well. Mm-hmm. But we have still to work on that. It's it's also mainly a business question. If there is enough big market for it, if we can see and with investment money, then to see how we can provide that. And let, let, let's see, we, we will work on that. But first we have a, a good beginning and I will... I saw already that the composers were mainly jumping on on uh, this on not on the key census because this is a system that of course already exists a synthesizer exists yeah but uh, it's interesting this air pressure sensor that's new and the move and in combination with a movement sensor and it's just a new thing and already these two sensors really offers a lot of possibilities. Yeah, I think the whole concept is fantastic, and I think that opens up some some serious new doors into both performance and composition for clarinetists. So, so yeah, I really look forward to hopefully uh, being able to check this out again at Clarinet Fest, and I hope that many many people stop by your booth and and check it out. If people um, are interested in hearing updates about this, do you have like an email subscription list or a way that they can stay in touch with you directly? Oh, I just go on once go on the on the website, and then you can also just friend us uh, on Facebook. We do. We will also bring down new. We will do new films. Pro- promotion goes over Facebook. Go on Facebook site Sabre Multi Sensor and just friend us, and then you get the information. Yeah, the website is Sabre MT dot com, and that's S A B R E dash mt.com and of course i'll link to that in the show notes they've got some really great information about the different products uh, the multi-sensor itself the remote and the software and uh, if you check out the home page it it shows they're having some fun here because they've got a little picture showing how it can be attached to various things and uh and then below there's matthias is playing a, a loaf of bread with it <laughs> <laughs> i see a carrot here it's just a little bit of fun pictures it's definitely worth worth checking out there so how'd you guys get the idea for these hilarious pictures yeah, it was, uh, we had the, the, our industrial designer, yeah. Stefan Schneller, he's also there. He is, uh, he was also a photographer and he had, we had big fun. We had big fun. It just shows how, <laughs> how we were working and, and we had big fun. And we, of, of course, I think this is uh, how you have to the approach. It's with, it's with fun. It's not, the, and then of course you can do serious work. And yeah. art is art is always both. Art is if you have no pleasure in art, then yeah, you can dig holes or you can <laughs> read paragraphs and write a lot of emails. <laughs> but <laughs> making music, specifically, I think is a, is an art which has to show also the joy you have with it. Otherwise, I, I think why to to. <laughs> To, to show it to others, I think this is too. I mean, of course, we, 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 we love all serious moments in art and probably 20th century was sometimes a little bit too serious, too tough. <laughs> I think we can need some, some joy now. <laughs> Actually, it was so interesting for me just to, to make a, give a little thing what happened in my life. It was within my recording of Mozart Concerto and I was reading really a lot about Mozart. And I did this composition I did with this double concerto. It's called Piccolo Concerto Grosso for two clarinets. I did with Michael Collins. It was such, I was so, I didn't want it to copy or do something with Mozart. I mean, how can I with this master? I mean, it's, I, I say the piece is In Ammirazione di Wolfgang Amade Mozart. <laughs> and, but it's not that we, we have now to say, okay, we have these masterpieces, stop developing the music. No, I don't think at all, but it's an inspiration. And of course, it's just a teacher. And it was so great to read about Mozart, how his approach to music. I mean, it was to touch the people, to touch the people. And just, I mean, it's in his music, this joy. And at the same time, to have this serious message also, and this very wonderful art, but at the same time, it's also very, very, um, I would say, I have to say it in, in Italian, leggero. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, this really serious um, music content to bring that together was is now I think for my le- the rest of my life it's like my 
<laughs> my uh, yeah main idea I would would like to to my lead idea to follow. Yeah, I mean, it probably uh, you know some people would find this very controversial, but I I do agree that a lot of 20th century music sort of almost became too serious for a while. You know, it's to the point where a lot of people couldn't um, relate um, in the public, anyways, especially you know. And uh, do you think the Sabre will sort of bridge this gap between what you're talking about with the the joy and the seriousness? Yes, I think it's it's just it's just I I a thing where you can do that now. I think you know the problem. Why was this music in the 20th century so serious? So uh, first, it was the logical development of music of creating new sounds, looking for new sounds first. And on the other hand, it was the disaster of the two world wars yeah. that created a situation that, for instance, the second half of the of the century where. I mean, how could you write a nice melody after the Second World War? It was just not <laughs> yeah, possible. Yeah. And, and then at the same time, just the music history ended in noise. We had all sounds, we're done, you ended in noise. And there is this really famous piece of Ligeti, you know, atmosphere, which yeah. shows that. It's just a big orchestra and it sounds like electronic music. It doesn't sound like an orchestra. It's a, it's just noise. If you don't know this piece, Ligeti, Atmosphere, check it out now. It's just the piece which shows where we have to come to a new thing, where it's just a big question remark, this, this piece. And Ligeti himself, he was in a crisis afterwards and he didn't know how to go on. And then he, he, he tried to go totally new ways of composing. And I think... There, we are still in that, we have still to recover of this big disaster that there was there. And I think, yeah, jazz can help us to come out of that. Also some kind of pop music. And it's really to find again a musical language that I think it has also a variety of emotional content. That's sometimes what I, I, I don't like in for instance, not the best music in 20th century, uh, is that it's so dark, so depressed, and but it's also emotionally very poor. Mm -hmm. And if you if you look to great music, also you can mention all great opera music. You can say also Brahms. We have not only dark moments; we have very dark moments, but also very hot, light moments. I, I think to bring back that a little bit to music. Yeah, I think, I don't say that Sabre now is the thing to bring the, the solution, but it can be a part of it, I think. I think, yes. Well, the Ligeti is so interesting. I've actually had the chance to play that. Um, it was very strange to play because you expect, it, it does sound very, you know, like you said, electronic and sort of otherworldly, but you still get the sheet music. It looks just like any other piece on paper, really. It's just music written out. Um, but uh, that piece... Uh, you're probably aware, but the um, it was used in the Stanley Kubrick movie, um, 2001 A Space Odyssey. And I heard that that's what actually brought Ligeti to prominence was the fact that Stanley or uh, Kubrick actually used it without licensing it. He just he, put, <laughs> yes. he just took the recording and then Ligeti heard this and was like, well, wait a minute, I should be credited for this. And he ended up getting to notoriety through this sort of <laughs> backwards yeah. way, which didn't really, <laughs> you know, please him at the time, but probably was worth it looking back. So. Right. Yeah. It shows just also the importance of music for, yeah. for people. And I, yeah, I, I think that, yeah, it's a pity. I mean, it was Ligeti didn't work really hard. He didn't do anything really interesting with electronics. But of course, we have also Stockhausen, mm -hmm. not an unimportant, also clarinet composer. He, I mean, he was the promoter of electronic music specifically at the beginning. And as you know, probably if you can see on my website also, I performed a lot at Kleine Harlequin. That was my my piece after study, my studies. And I had contact with him, I met him. And I remember I had a really opportunity to be in his house when he was talking for a normal dinner. It was, I could see his composing room. It was a very special moment. And I remember when he said, oh, why are there here always these cables? I have to. <laughs> 
carry cables and cables. Why does technique doesn't invent something else? And now we have it. My yeah. system is wireless. I don't need any cable. <laughs> so uh, I think, I mean, he was really a prophet of, of, of try, and trying to bring that in music. And so it's, I think it's really great. I think, I mean, of course, uh, Stockhausen still couldn't profit yet on the, of the dig- digital possibilities of electronics. Uh, but we can now, we can, and I think that's also such a good thing now. I, I, I want to give this also really, uh, we want to really make a good prize. Really, we try to give our best. We, we have to earn money, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we will make, we try really to, to do a good prize that the young generation in the whole world can profit of that and try, try it out and, and really find new ways of making music and having joy with it. Thank you so much. And I really hope to have the chance to, to run into you again out at Clarinet Fest this summer. Yeah, hope to see you guys all there and come to the booth of Sabre and to the concert. And I look really forward to talk with you about it and come with all questions you have. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Clarinet Podcast. For detailed show notes, head to www.clarinet.com. And while you're there, I invite you to check out our new Patreon page. Backers of the Clarinet Podcast now get access to exclusive bonus content, extended full-length episodes presented in high-resolution audio, and more. You can get started today for as little as $1 a month. Be sure to tune in next time for a conversation with the four girls from the four-play clarinet ensemble. Other upcoming guests include Stanley Drucker, who was, of course, the principal clarinetist of the New York Philharmonic for over 60 years. I'm also happy to say that his producer, who is also an accomplished clarinetist in his own right, Jerome Boonke, will be joining me on the show. Today's episode was brought to you by our sponsor, D'Addario Woodwinds. Thank you again so much for listening. Sanding, shaping, balancing. For centuries, mastering your instrument meant mastering these crafts too. But now, D'Addario is refining craftsmanship for the 21st century by refining their reeds and mouthpieces with the world's most innovative techniques, so you can spend less time sanding, shaping, and balancing, and more time perfecting your own craft. To learn more about the new era of craftsmanship from D'Addario Woodwinds, visit daddario.com woodwinds. <laughs>